Welcome back to Coast View. I really enjoyed that conversation with Jonathan Brannon. It's uh, always cool to check in with people who you've gotten to know uh, through WLW Act or maybe the Sun Herald who've gone on to do other things with their careers, use that you know, really incredible and well-developed ability to communicate their thoughts as we discussed in that segment. But, uh, you know, he's a, he's an impressive young man. And I look forward to staying in touch with him. There's a lot more to talk about in his world. In fact, he's an incredibly talented dude. And, uh, and we'll come back at some point in the future and talk about what he does when he's not at work. A lot of, a lot of fun there for sure. I talk about the, the military here on coast view, every chance I get it's the military that has created this, dimension here in coastal Mississippi, bringing people in from all over the world, people who come to work at Keesler and the CB base and all these other uh, roles that are played in the military arena in coastal Mississippi, they may pass through here, but oftentimes they'll come back here. They'll retire here or work here. And uh, they, they gen, gen, genuinely and generally love their time in coastal Mississippi. I came across um it was actually a Facebook post, and it was called the uh, Naval Construction Battalion Center Spotlight, and it was a spotlight for, about a person by the name of Raquel Jeffers, and she said, uh, essentially, in, in in a quote, she talked about how the Navy is helping her dreams, has helped her dreams become, become a reality, and uh, it was just a very impressive thing. And I sent a note. And I said, you know, I'd like to, I'd like to bring Raquel onto this show and have a conversation with her. And without any further ado, let me, let me, let me uh, bring in my new friend Raquel Jeffers. And first of all, just say good morning to you. How you doing? Good morning. I'm doing very well. Thank you. It's good. So where are you sitting right now, Raquel? I'm in my office. Um, so I am the command master chief at Navy Construction Training Center. It's the A school for our builders and steel worker. So I'm their senior enlisted advisor. Well, just just to be clear, she has a really, really important role. <laughs> and we're gonna we'll come back to that in just a second and talk more about what it is she's doing. But as we were chatting before uh, before the show, she actually was born in Jamaica and she came to the United States when she was nine. And uh, did you come directly to Miami at that time? Uh yeah. Not. I, I went to uh, New York like all Islanders. They go to New York or Miami. So I went to New York first and then uh, my family came to Miami. And so um, I went there. I started like junior high and high school. Yeah. And so when did you make the decision? When, you know, you, you obviously you, you picked the Navy, but then you really started to refine what you wanted to do uh, as you got into sort of the naval construction side of things. And that literally has taken you all over the world. And I want to—I want you to take us a bit on that journey. But let's start with: How did you decide the Navy was going to be a good solution for you in terms of a career goal? So I was about 20 years old, and I was like, "Man, what am I going to do in my life?" Right. So I was going to Miami Dade Community College, but not really going to college. You know, go one day, one day the next day. And so I was like, uh, I got to do something with my life. So I just went to the recruiter and said, hey, I want to be in the Navy. Didn't know what field I wanted to be in, just I wanted to be in the Navy. So I took the ASVAB and he's like, well, we have a couple of office jobs. I don't want uh, any office jobs. So he said, hey, how about construction electrician? I was like, awesome. So that's how my career got started in Port Wainimi. That's where I went to A school at the time. You went. You went through training in California, and uh, in 1992, and uh, yeah. I don't think you realized at the time that it was literally going to unlock a journey for you on the construction I, side I, of the Navy that was going to be unbelievable. Yes, sir. I was only going to do five years and and call it quits, and here I am, <laughs> 31 years and six months later, still loving what I do, sir. So your first duty station was at the uh, U.S. Naval facility in Antigua, West, West Indies. And, you know, having grown up in Jamaica, it probably wasn't, it probably somewhat familiar to you, but you probably still had to pinch yourself to say, wow, where is this gig going to take me around the world? At, probably at the time you had no idea that it would ultimately bring you to where it brought you. But um, it, was a, it was a pretty good first assignment, wasn't it? It was because I was like, man, I'm from the islands and I got Antigua because uh, back then in A school, you pick your orders according to how you ranked in your class. And so I was number four and I was like, uh, man, I hope I get Cuba. But somebody picked Cuba and then I looked on the list. Oh, Antigua. Awesome. And so that's where my <laughs> career really started. 
So well, from there awesome. you you had time you have opportunity to go to Orlando, <clears throat> Gulfport. How many times have you been through Gulfport? So I will tell you, sir. I came to Gulfport when they first allowed females in Battalion in 1994. They said pick a number, and so it was 133. So I was one of the first females in Battalion in 1994, and so I came to Gulfport as a young uh, paid officer E4. And I left Gulfport as a senior chief, which is an E8. So, you know, as a CB, you can go shore uh, and see at the battalions. So, NMCB. So, I did a couple of battalions, uh, instructor duty, um, safety. So, yes. So, I left um, as a senior chief. So, that, to, then, that then took you to Guam, Korea, and Spain, and then eventually um, Iraq. Israel. Yes, oh yes, my sir. gosh! Yeah, get, 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 give us a sense of where all you ended up going. So in my time in battalion, I I started off in my first deployment was to Guam, and then in Guam uh, they needed help in Chinhei, Korea. That place is freezing cold. Uh, so that was my first awakening to how cold uh, some place could be. And then after that deployment, I came back, and then we went to uh, Rota, Spain. Um, from there, um, back again, you know, you did Guam, and then I've also did uh, Okinawa, Japan, and I got the opportunity to go to uh, Yakuska and also Atsugi. Um, from there, came back, did another Guam tour, um, then I went to uh, Israel, uh, Seoul, so just, you know, a lot of um, deployments. So back wow. then, and it was seven and seven. So yes, the Horn of Africa, so, Iraq, and what's what's Ruby, interesting? Zimbabwe, yeah, sir. I I remind people of this. You mentioned Road to Spain, but it's a Road to Spain for 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 the Naval Construction Battalion unit is a really important place in terms of deployment. You know, it's a staging area, just one of a, two or three staging areas. But um, it's good to get that experience in something like Rota and then go from there, isn't it? Yes, sir. It is. It's the opportunity. Um, I had the opportunity to go to Rota. Um, and then from there, I, I was sent from Rota to Djibouti. So that's definitely a staging point. So I think in my uh, career, I've been to Djibouti as a young chief in uh, 2005, 2012, and then in 2017 as a master chief. So yes, experience, experience Djibouti quite often. Well, what's no. it, what's interesting, and I think it's important for people to realize this, and um, I, I remind people of this every time I have someone from the Naval Construction Battalion Center here, the CB base here, is that we we literally this base literally has people deployed all over the world. Now, some of those missions are military missions that we know about. Some of those we don't even know about. Some some there we can't speak about that because we don't exactly know where they are, but they're doing something that's critical to a military. Uh, uh, you know, mission. And then on top of that, then you have sort of the humanitarian side of what they do. We saw that play out here in coastal Mississippi after Hurricane Katrina and the role the, the CBs played in helping coastal Mississippi rebuild. But there's a huge humanitarian side of this. Have you had the opportunity to do both, Raquel, in your work? Yes, sir. I was here for Katrina. I was uh, actually uh, a first class so we had the opportunity to to go out and help our uh, civilian aspect of it. So it was definitely rewarding to be able to to help the civilian counterpart while you know clearing the uh, the roadways, clearing the houses, so they could actually get back into their homes. Sir. It's a it's a, an incredibly important part of our overall resilience. The fact that we have these people who come through the base who are engaged in sometimes a humanitarian effort that in, in, that involves us and a disaster that hits us, as it was the case after Hurricane Katrina. But, you know, it's, it's their presence that helps us become very resilient here in this community. So as you, uh, you know, as you, as you went on through your career, you continue to sort of specialize as, as time went on. Give me a sense of what that ascension looked like with your career. So after I went battalion, I uh, came out of battalion um, as a second class. I got the opportunity to be instructor. So instructor, you know, you taught communications. And so I was able to uh, teach other uh, sailors how to, to use uh, communications. From there, went back to battalion, did a letter, uh, got the opportunity to, to, to lead 
uh, go to Israel and actually plan uh, an actual project uh, to help unfortunate people. So David just gave us the opportunity to be humanitarian. After that, I came back to uh, uh, COM, did COM again, but this time as a senior enlisted. Um, and then I got the opportunity to go back to battalion because uh, there's not much female leadership. So the opportunity that, you know, you had to let young sailors know that, hey, it's an opportunity that you can lead also. And so I wanted to get out of golf court for a little bit. So I went to uh, Millington and uh, there I went to uh, NAVMAC, which is uh, allowing folks to actually see the side of how big the Navy is. Let's you know, do this so, when we come back. We're at the um, end of the segment. To, uh, we're at the end of the segment, but when we come back, we'll continue our conversation with Raquel Jeffries, who's got a really important role at Naval Construction Battalion Center here in Gulf Point. We'll talk more about that too, as well. We'll see you after this break. Welcome back to Coastview. I'm having a conversation with uh, really an important officer at um, the Naval Construction Battalion Center, the CB base. We and her name is Raquel Jeffers, and we've been telling her story. I mean, she's literally been all over the world, involved in so many different important projects for the Navy. She's had a, just a terrific career in the Navy. Um, you know, if you if you, if you look back, what what was the most important moments in your career? Because I mean, your your resume is incredibly long. You've been you've received so many awards along the way, so much recognition. What do you think was the most important experience that you got that, that led you to where you are today? So I I think the most uh, important uh, experience for me is is all the leaders that that actually took the time to mentor me and gave me that opportunity. But I think for me the greatest uh, accomplishment is when Katrina in 2005 when I picked up uh, Chief. And so it's a big deal to actually uh, pick up chief in the Navy. So I think that was one of my, my highlights in my career is to actually put the anchor on and, and know that it comes with a great deal of responsibility, but I was ready for it. You yeah. Know? So I think that was one of uh, the greatest moments. And also just having the support of both my daughters, they have been my strongest support as I uh, continue my career in the Navy. Hey, tell me about your daughters. So I have two daughters. Uh, my oldest is uh, Kalia. She's 25. She graduated from Mississippi State, and she now works for the state of Jackson, and she lives in Canton. Um, they say she looks like me, but she's kind of quiet. And then my second daughter, she's uh, Janice, and she goes to the University of South Alabama, majoring in um, bio. So, yes. So. Wow, you have smart daughters. Good for you. Uh -huh. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, but but I mean, you look at your your past and obviously education and approaching your not only your education but your career with dogged determination and a sense of mission. That's that kind of describes you, doesn't it? It does. It does. Um, you know, I I tell my sailors um, that hey, you can never be comfortable where you are. How do you get to the next level, and what do you need to accomplish that? Once you get comfortable, that's when you know you get stagnant. So I've always tried to say, hey, what's what's the next step? And for me, like like I told you earlier, that you know when I joined the Navy, I don't know if I was coming and going. And so for me, it's like, hey, you know, how do I get to this level? And what does it take? So I do mine in increments, as you can see. You know, for me, it was like, hey. I need to get that two-year degree and then work on the four-year degree and then work on the master's. And the Navy is given the opportunity to do that because they allow me to get um, all my education on their yeah. dime. So yeah. I'm thankful. So, so tell me about um, specifically what you do in your current role. So I am uh, the Command Master Chief for Naval Construction Training Center. So that's like the senior enlisted. Um, we have... A schoolers like learning their trade to become steel workers and builders. So I am the senior enlisted. So I make sure that anything that needs uh, fixing or just needs to are uh, taken care of before I present it to the commanding officer. You know, so that so it's I'm big, that big. So it's a big, big role. <laughs> it's a, it's a it big, is. big role. You have a lot of people and and uh, equipment to say grace over, don't you? Yeah, we have a lot of uh, students that come through. About five thousand students. A year and so we also yes yeah, so it's a lot of students that come through so we try to give them you know the stepping stone stepping stone to start their career and the foundation with uh, a trade 
So what what touches me about your story, Raquel, is the fact that you came here from Jamaica. You said when you were nine, right? You came to New York and made your way down to um, Miami, and then you came into the Navy. And um, you know, we've you had this distinguished career that has taken you literally all over the place. And you you think about that, and um, you 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 look back on that and the number of people that you've had the opportunity to inspire along the way because as you pointed out the navy is a great place for you to be able to achieve your dreams but one of the things yes, we talked sir. about during the break was the 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 role that you have as a role model to others um tell, talk to me about that so you know when i was coming up in the navy uh there wasn't much female in the cb community as of right now there's four command master females. And so again, uh, not much uh, minority uh, females. So I am the first uh, African-American uh, command master for the series, female. So, you know, when I walk into a room, um, people see me, oh, is that possible? I can be that person too. And so, you know, I'm inspired to tell them, hey, that you can be my replacement. And all it takes is a little bit of hard work and dedication. And um, you, you'll get some roadblocks, but that's how you learn. You learn by failure is not the, the last of it. Failure helps you to, to learn and grow as a leader. Well, what, uh, for, for the radio audience, I'll describe, um, I'll describe what I sense in Raquel. First of all, she has a beautiful smile, and, and that, that comes across. Um, and the fact that she's had so much experience, I, I, I mentioned to her during the break, I bet, I bet when she has to be, she's tough, but that's not her fallback plan. Her fallback plan probably usually is to do relationship building and and use that smile to create sort of a, a, a good environment where people can hopefully thrive in a, in a way that they're passionate about what they're doing. But, you know, I, you know you're just one more great example of the, of the kind of wonderful people who are coming through this base, who are making a contribution to coastal Mississippi, and who have a story to tell. And I'm just thrilled that you spent some time with me today, my friend. All right. Thank you for having me. It's been a great pleasure, actually. This has been Ra Raquel Jeffries from the uh, Naval Construction Battalion Center in Gulfport, and uh, you know we'll have uh, we'll have more like Raquel back uh, in the in the near future. Have a great day, and we'll see you tomorrow. All right, thank you.